Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little of PokerCoaching.com and today we are going to be reviewing a wild hand from the 1 million pound buy-in tournament that took place in London recently. And this is a doozy. So essentially, what happened pre-flop is uh, Stephen Chidwick raised from the hijack seat with Jack 8 of clubs, which is perfectly fine. It's very reasonable to open Jack 8 of clubs, 10-7 suited, 10-8 suited, 9-7 suited, hands like that. Sometimes or all the time, depending on who is yet to act. If this was offsuit, it would definitely be a fold, though. Um, Sam Trickett called in the small blind with ace-jack offsuit. He could three bet or call. Either play is fine. And then um, Bren Kenny defended the big blind with eight-six offsuit, which is also fine because he was getting great odds. And, you know, eight-six makes some straights and two pairs. And when you're getting a good price, you should be seeing the flop with hands that are at least kind of connected. So flop comes seven, four, three, all clubs. And as you see... Everyone has a little bit on the 7-4-3 all-clubs flop. Sam Trickett has the ace-high flush draw and overcards. Really good hand. Bryn Kinney has a gut shot and a six-high flush draw, which is yeah, a little bit worse than the ace-jack. <laughs> and Stephen Chidwick just flops a flush. And then something kind of weird happens. It checks through. Kind of bizarre that the flop would check through here. So Sam Trickett should be checking small blind a ton. Bryn Kenny could conceivably lead with this hand because it's essentially a junky draw that if you bet, you can make some hands fold like maybe king-queen with a queen of clubs, right? You can make hands like that fold, which would be okay. And um, if your opponents just have like ace high, they're also going to fold. So leading is viable, but I, I would have just checked as he did. And then Stephen Chidwick checked behind. Now, Stephen Chidwick is a good game theory optimal player. And I don't know for sure, but I bet every once in a while... You're supposed to check your flushes. And I'm sure he's doing some sort of randomization tactic to check. So I would have just always bet the Jack Ada clubs here, but he decides to check, and that's that's neat, right? Now, the turn is a jack, giving Sam Trickett top pair. And now Sam Trickett checks, which I also think is okay. I would perhaps just bet with the ace jack, thinking it's the best hand a ton, but if Steven Chidwick is going to check hands like pocket kings on the flop, which I do think is perfectly fine, if he is going to be checking hands like kings, then you don't really want to bet the ace-jack. Plus, the nice thing about ace-jack here is you can just check call any bet because you have the, the now flush draw and top pair, so you're loving life in that scenario, if someone does uh, bet. So checking is reasonable. Bryn Kenny decides not to bluff, fine. And then Steven Chidwick checks behind again, <laughs> which... Seems really interesting now because you'd have to think that he would love to protect his hand and just get money in the pot, right? So why would he check here? I don't have a great answer for you. Besides, maybe he's also just doing the randomization again. Imagine like he's supposed to check the flop one out of 10 times with the Jack Eight of clubs. And then he knows he's supposed to check the turn <laughs> one tenth of the time with the Jack Eight of clubs here with the flush. Maybe he just lined it up to where he had the one in 10 and then the one in 10 again. If I was playing a million dollar pound tournament or million pound tournament, and I randomly got the 1 in 10 and 1 in 10 where I really wanted to be betting, but nah, you're supposed to check sometimes. I'd be like, oh my god, come on. That said, Stephen Chidwick, I'm presuming, is playing amazingly well, and he decided to check it again. River is now a 7, and Sam Trickett bets 16,000. It is worth mentioning that Bryn Kinney loves to attack pots, especially whenever everyone has shown weakness. Uh, Sam Trickett does as well. So maybe Stephen, Ch Stephen Chidwick was thinking if it goes check, 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 maybe uh, one of these two players will make a very big bluff if they happen to have nothing. And, um, well, let's pick up the action right here. So now, on the river, Sam Trickett value bets the ace-jack for 16000 a small bet into a 45000 pot. Sure, right? Most likely everybody has nothing. And now... It's on Bren Kenny. And like I said, Bren Kenny is not afraid. He is uh, perhaps the least afraid poker player you're ever going to play with who plays at a very high level. There are certainly some players out there who are just maniacal, um, which is not necessarily good. But Bren Kenny is maniacal in a very targeted way, which is really tough to play against. And right here you see Sam Trigger bets a little 16,000. And then Bren Kenny makes it 102,000. He blasts it. He bets about 1.5, or about two times the size of the pot. That is strong. And now, what does Stephen Chidwick do with the Jack Eight of Clubs? I think he really only has one option here, and I think that is to just call. If he raises, what's going to call him, right? He's pretty much only going to get called by a full house or a 
uh, a better flush, right? It is worth mentioning that both players in the blinds could conceivably have a hand like pocket sevens, pocket fours, pocket threes that all check the flop. The um, big blind could have jack seven, big blind could have seven four, could have seven three, right? So this is a spot where it definitely makes no sense for Chidwick to raise, but he does need to call, especially knowing um, Sam Trickett's a little bit loose and aggressive and Brent Kenny is not afraid to get in there and battle. So now, I was sitting here thinking, when I was watching this, I was like, oh my goodness, Trickett has an easy fold, unless he decides to get really aggressive and make a big re-raise. And a big re-raise here, given his um, you know, 469,000 chip stack, would be all in, right? Um, because why would you ever use ace jack as the all in here? Well, you have the ace of clubs blocker, so you know your opponents can't have the ace high flush. You also have a jack, which means you know, well, at least it's way less likely someone has jack seven or pocket jacks, right? So this is, this was a value bet on the river for 16,000, and now all of a sudden it's become a potential bluff candidate. Are there some better bluff candidates? You always want to consider that. Well, I think ace of clubs seven would be a very viable candidate, but Sam Trickett never has a seven in the small blind facing a raise, right? He's going to fold that almost every time unless he decides to three bet it. So this is basically the best bluffing hand Sam Trickett can have, right? So the question is, do you go for it? In situations like this, most players get deathly afraid of going for it, but you have to realize just because it's a million pound tournament or Perhaps in your case, the biggest tournament you ever played. Maybe you normally play $500 tournaments, but you find yourself in a $3,500 tournament. Don't chicken out and not go for plays that you just think are right or know are right. Because if you essentially have no bluffs in your range against good players, you're going to be really easy to play against. And right here, Sam Trickett is a fighter as well. I've played with him a few times, and he's just always prone to put you in a terrible spot. And you're going to find that a lot of the best players in the world, they will just put you in bad spots consistently with aggression. Notice, Sam Trickett just jams it all in. It's power poker right there, right? Brent Kenny has an obviously easy fold. He has nothing. <laughs> He's thinking, what in the world did I step into? And now, what a bad spot for Chidwick. Because, interestingly enough, he has a pretty good bluff catcher here. Because... He has a jack in his hand, which makes it way less likely Chidwick has, or way less likely Trickett has um, pocket jacks or jack seven, right? Obviously, he's not gonna have jack seven very often at all, because you have to think he'd three better full jack seven. So, would Sam Trickett jam pocket fours or pocket threes here? I don't know. Would he jam um, a lower flush? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not, right? So in this scenario, Chidwick essentially only beats a bluff. Is the opponent sick enough to run a bluff in this scenario? And <laughs> also, would the opponent actually run that bluff? You have to understand that just because someone is a little bit crazy or capable of being a little bit crazy does not mean that they are going to be crazy all the time, right? And if there is ever a time where you would presume your opponent is going to be not quite as crazy, you would think it'd be in a million pound buy an event. <laughs> um, that said, Sam Trickett is uh, definitely a tough player, and this is what happens. So, should Chidwick call here? I mean, just from sort of a GTO point of view, I mean, it's a weird spot, right? Ask yourself, how often does it actually go check, check, check on the flop, check, check, check on the turn, then small bet on the river, raise, call, and then all in. Anytime you see significant river action like this, it is almost always with a very, very strong made hand. And for that reason, I think it's probably just okay for Chidwick to fold. It is certainly unfortunate, but um, you know what are you going to do? The, the one weird, really weird part in this scenario, though, scenario though, is the fact that um, it's kind of hard for Trickett to have Jack Seven, right? He could have Six Five of Clubs. That's a hand that makes a lot of sense. He could also have um, pocket fours or threes, but I don't even know if he's jamming those. So definitely a weird scenario. And whenever you only lose to one or two or seven combinations of hands. Maybe eight combinations of hands, right? Pocket sevens, six five of clubs, fours and threes. 
you should at least consider hero calling if your opponent is a person who is capable of bluffing because they may find those random bluffs. And Sam Trickett did this time and uh, scooped a very nice pot. That said, didn't help him. Uh, Steven Chidwick made the final table and, well, Sam Trickett did not. <laughs>